Good morning. Good, good Friday. There you go. Right. Good Friday. Absolutely. This is, this, Friday, yes. this is his 2024 media day bureau. Oh, this is a big moment. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Peter, can you? Are you ready? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Can you looking back to last year? Can you tell us what you've identified as the reasons why you weren't last year what you've been most times? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a, it was a you know, a culmination of a lot of things. Uh, we weren't as disruptive as we need to be uh, in the front seven uh, with, with tackles for loss, negative yardage plays. Uh, you know, we had, uh, I thought, uh, some sack opportunities that uh, we just didn't finish. Um, and then uh, when the ball went in the perimeter uh, vertically, sometimes we didn't play the ball uh, as well um, as I think we can or, or definitely didn't play as well as we should. Uh, and what we're trying to identify, and we spend a lot of time, is I'm kind of on this little kick right now. I'm calling it the inside action gap. And it's the separation, the difference between knowing and doing. And uh, I really feel like 98% uh, of the time, I think the kids can tell you what the technique are, what is, uh, what we're trying to get accomplished. Uh, but we have to get, we have to improve from from the application, from the knowing to the doing. And what we're stressing right now is, first of all, knowledge. You have to understand what we're asking you to do. And then to get the knowledge, you have to have the confidence. And then from confidence to the belief. And then once you hit that belief button, then we have to go out there and we have to execute and we have to we have to perform at a better level. So obviously you gave up way more yards passing the ball than you would want to. Lots of touchdown passes. How much of that is the lack of the pass rush and how much that's the secondary? Well, I will always say that that you know defense, you know the pass, the pass rush, and the pass defense is a wee problem. It's all eleven, um, and you know uh, the st the stats were, were not where we need to be. And what's interesting is our number one, uh, I think, pass defense in our conference was number fifty four in America. Uh, so I think Oregon uh, was the number one pass defense at fifty four, uh, and then you know I think you have uh, one conference. I think four of the top five uh, defenses and pass defense were from all from the same conference. Uh, so, you know, there's some context uh, to who you're competing against. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, we played some extremely talented quarterbacks last season. Uh, so, uh, but, you know, that's, that's not an excuse. That's uh, probably explanation. Um, and we played some good teams, and, and we, have to, we have to play better. And that's, that's the bottom line when, when we talk as coaches, when Coach Wilcox talks to us as a defensive staff, and we uh, continue to spread that message to our players. We have to perform on a higher level, and that's the difference between knowing and doing. What are you seeing from the new defensive backs, and tell us how you how you think they're playing right now? Yeah, you know we brought some new guys in. Uh, Isaiah Crosby has been playing with the ones and the twos. Marcus Harris, uh, you know, has played uh, a lot of ball, and you know he's a very productive player uh, at Idaho. Uh, and then you know Jair Smith, you know, is in the mix, playing some uh, you know a couple of those those uh, secondary positions back there. Uh, all those guys have have really good traits. You know, I think they're uh, the three of them are extremely athletic. Uh, two of them uh, have, I mean, two of them might be the, the you know, I think uh, Marcus and Isaiah might be the two fastest players we have on the football team uh, just by joining us, you know, in, in January. So uh, those traits are, are traits we've been uh, 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 very passionate and, and looking real hard to add to some guys that have some um, exceptional straight line speed, some recovery speed, and the ability of, of trying to get the ball, if, if the ball does spit, trying to get that ball on the ground and letting us play another snap. All three of those guys seem to come in with a little bit of swag to them, kind of like Noel did last year. Mm -hmm. Is that your assessment too? Yeah, I think all they all are uh, very intentional in the in the uh, building. Uh, they're all very they've all shown a really good maturity uh, about handling their business, about meeting with with Trey and Terrence. Uh, they've come out here and they've, they've really shown a really good workmanlike approach to it. And, uh, you know, that's, in, in, in my experience, is the maturity in which some of these players come in is going to be directly proportional to how much they help us. Uh, guys that come in that are a little bit youthful, that, that don't quite have some of that maturity where they can handle uh, the football, the academics, the, the transition, typically those guys that, that uh, is a little bit of a harder transition. But when the guys come up with maturity uh, and they're, uh, they're ready to work, you know, those guys, it seems like we can get their uh, talent on the field and they can play really close to their capacity early. And does that speed translate to effective blitzing? Because it seems like some of those guys have gotten in there really quick. There was a block by, by Jair on one of Fernando's passes. And, I mean, blitzes don't do any good if they don't finish. Yeah, I mean, uh, fast guys are fast. So uh, everything we want to do, it uh, doesn't matter if we're blitzing from, you know, inside or outside or, 
or you know trying to run down a tunnel or jailbreak screen. It's uh, you know if we can if we can get more guys that that have some special qualities that are that are different than who they're playing against, and we can get them uh, you know to, to shrink that gap between the knowing and the doing, then uh, you know I think we can see some improvement. Do you expect to blitz more? And and other than that, what do you see in terms of how your pressure will be improved? Well, it's it's still early, you know. It's uh, you know, spring is, is probably an early time right now. Um, I'm asking the guys. I'm putting the guys in different situations. You know, we'll blitz some guys to see kind of what their tools are. Uh, you know, in seven on seven, and in, in, you know, some of these times, I'm going to try to put them in man to see, try to identify. You know, what what's their capacity to play in man? You know, out here, I can see different matchups. I can I can call some calls. You know. Uh, a man in the press versus a faster guy, or excuse me, uh, in the slot versus a faster guy, man versus a bigger guy. I'm really trying to assess, you know, what they're, you know, what are they naturally gifted at, and what comes easy, and, you know, those are the plays, those are the calls that I'm going to kind of continue to emphasize here, as we develop their their deficiencies. What's your confidence level that you'll be markedly better defensively than you were? Uh, you know, I don't. I, you know, we'll, we'll see how the how the season unfolds. It's uh, it's very early for for me to have a prognostication about that. And then, you know, what is improvement? Is it statistical improvement? Is it winning nine games? Um, you know, I think we were up there. Uh, you know, I think we took the ball away really well. You know, would I rather give up less yards or be number one in America for takeaways? I don't know. You know, so uh, there's a lot of context. Ultimately, as a defensive coordinator, I'm here to minimize scoring and help the team win. That, that that's a hundred. That, that that's that's the realest I can be is the minimized scoring stats or stats or stats, and they're uh, they definitely paint a picture of what your uh, defense can do. Um, you know, so I'll, I'll probably be I'll probably be non-committal with what improvement is, but uh, we want to give up less points and we want to win more games. Anybody in particular jumping out so far? Uh, you know, I think David uh, Reese and Xavier Carlton. I think those are two uh, players that. Uh, that have uh, really established themselves with uh, some leadership qualities. They're coming out here, they're behaving like leaders, they're talking like leaders, and they're playing like leaders. So uh, I think that's fantastic for those guys to step into that role. You're looking for that every year on a new team. How, how gratifying is it that you got a couple of veterans who are stepping into those roles? You're exactly right about that. And what's interesting is, is you know, uh, kind of from our defensive perspective, we're continuing to build one-year teams. You know, every year it's like, okay, what, what is this group going to be like? And unfortunately, you know, April 15 or whenever the next portal window opens, there'll be, you know, there, there'll be some movement. Uh, but it's all about what can we do to make this cohesive group as cohesive as possible to put the best product on the field for one season and then seeing where we're at in a year from now and who's here and who's not here and, and all those different things that can unfold. And that leadership uh, piece, do you go to the players and say, I need that from you, or do they come to you? I, you know, I think the leadership thing. I think it's easy to talk about. I think it's easy to put a bunch of powerpoints on what you're identifying. Uh, I think people build themselves and they develop into leadership roles. Um, and then even at that build and develop, uh, a leader has to be received. You can't demand leadership. You can't demand other people to follow you. There needs to be, uh, there needs to be a, a holistic look of how does this guy behave? How does he prepare? You know, how does he live off the field? How does he practice? There's so much to it that, that you know, sometimes you see these guys, oh, these captains are leaders. I've never been anywhere that you appoint a leader. I, I think that's, I think that's, uh, 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 I think it's just not authentic. And I think it's, it's kind of this BS for, for me to think that I can make a leader. The locker room is going to tell you who the leaders are. So those guys are earning their respect to their Absolutely. teammates. Yeah. Your inside backer room looks quite a bit different right now. Uh, three freshmen. <clears throat> uh, is there something or someone that stands out so far at that group? You know, uh, well, it's Eze's birthday today, so he just turned 18. So uh, yesterday he was a 17-year-old, and he was out there uh, taking a lot of reps. So we are extremely youthful. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of inexperience out there, but you know the guys are, are working hard. I think uh, some of the young guys have good tools. Uh, you know, the, we have some new new faces here. Uh, so uh, Luke Ferelli from Carlsbad is a, is a very talented uh, player. He played some edge uh, in high school, and now we're playing behind the ball a little more, which takes a little bit of time. Uh, Eze Osundu, who is his birthday today, uh, big 18 years old, always got a smile on his face. Uh, you know, he's a guy that's getting some opportunities. 
Uh, and then Aaron Hampton, who was a player that joined us up from uh, Anchorage. Uh, and he's, he's getting a lot of opportunities as well. So uh, we have those three true freshmen uh, mid-year, so they're getting great opportunity. And, and uh, you know, we'll continue to add some people you know, in the roster and, and make sure that's a, that's a unit that has a blend of experience and, and youth and talent. You referenced uh, some of the context from last season. Are there some trends you're seeing from an ACC schedule that you're preparing for this offseason? You know, we've identified all, all of our opponents, and really the early opponents uh, have had transition uh, in their coaching staff. So in years past, had there been consistency in that, uh, I probably would have dove a little bit deeper into what they've been doing. Uh, but with, with, the, with another portal window open uh, and not knowing who the final roster is going to be and then the transition of the coaching staffs and all of this is pre-spring, there's no information, there's no articles, there's, there's nothing. So right now we're kind of holding serve on, on uh, kind of some of those uh, traditional off-season studies because uh, the, the collection of the coaches and the collection of the players is uh, just really in flux right now, uh, early in the season. We're going back to a region where you spent a lot of time um, playing at Wake Forest when you've been in North Carolina. Is it kind of fun for you to, to think about going back into the, the southeast area? Yeah, I think the um, the east and the southeast and up in that, even that northeast region with the you know uh, some of the um, Syracuse and, and then the, that, that North Carolina region with all the schools, uh, I think it's a, uh, a great footprint for us. Uh, I think it's great that we're going to have some access into those spots. Uh, you know, I think we're still pretty primarily a West Coast operation. You know, you, you feel like we're really starting to dig deep into Texas. Um, they, they do a good job of producing uh, football players. So I, I think, you know, we'll be mindful uh, of, of kind of where we get into in terms of the recruiting. Uh, and then, you know, I think there's going to be some significant changes. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen, uh, you know, some of the, the forecasts for the recruiting schedule, the change. But there's going to be, I mean, there's, we're going to really, really, really get limited on how much off-campus contact we're having. That it's going to have to be a lot more people coming to see us. And it's going to be interesting to see if the high school recruiting turns a little more regional. Just because if we don't, we're not going to have, you know, we're not going to be a, you know, 156 days on the road, you know, as we were, the 163 or whatever it is, 150 plus, that's going to be minimized. Uh, the windows in December uh, for some of the uh, off-campus contacts are going to be minimized. So we're going to have a harder time actually getting to see those kids in person for evals. So, which would lend you to, you know, some conventional wisdom to, you know, who can you get to, you know, and, you know, kind of in your neighborhood. What's uh, Cade in the lobby's situation this spring? Uh, he'll be joining us. You know, he's uh, uh, right now he uh, is unavailable. He's got a little, uh, he's dealing with something in the, uh, in the training room, but uh, I anticipate Cade to be with us uh, uh, very, very soon. Got nothing long term going on. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.